You're listening to the micro version of the Savage Lovecast, www.savagelovecast.com. If you're stuck in a relationship quandary, or if you're looking for sexual harmony, well, there's nothing you can't ask on the Savage Lovecast. I haven't read Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, and full disclosure, I'm not going to read Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. I've never really been into books full of rules. It's one of the reasons I walked away from the Catholic Church in my teens. Also never been into the kind of people who write books of rules or insist that their book full of rules has all the answers. I got through the 1990s without reading The Rules, Time-Tested Secrets for Capturing the Heart of Mr. Right, which was a phenomenon then. And I'm pretty sure I can get through the teens or whatever we're calling this decade without reading 12 Rules for Life. And pretty much for the same reason I didn't watch Two Girls, One Cup. Everything you need to know about some shit shows, you can learn reading about them. You don't need to buy a ticket and show up for the shit show itself. So anyway, I was reading about Jordan B. Peterson, AKA the most influential public intellectual in the Western world right now, reading about him this weekend in the New York Times. Peterson, if you haven't been paying attention, and I wasn't until very recently, is a psychology professor at the University of Toronto, who rose to prominence when he refused to use or protested being compelled to use trans and gender nonconforming students' preferred pronouns. Peterson is a big proponent of patriarchy, male dominance also, but that's the same thing, isn't it? And hierarchies, a.k.a. male dominance, patriarchy, same things, because lobsters or something. And he rails against the left because of the left's supposed devotion to equality of outcomes. All right, first, it's equality of opportunities the left supports, not equality of outcomes, but you only have to look at the current inequality of outcomes to know that we haven't achieved equality of opportunity. So outcomes is relevant when you talk about equality of opportunity. Anyway, zooming out even further, change is scary, and it makes people anxious. And nostalgia for the 1950s, which Peterson endorses and promotes, nostalgia for simpler, more harmonious times that were neither simple nor harmonious for the people living in them then, it really is the big bottle of Xanax. Might make you feel a little less anxious, but nostalgia, like Xanax, is also going to make you stupid, suggestible, and easily misled. So anyway, I was reading about the Jordan B. Peterson shit show in the New York Times this weekend, a terrific piece by Nellie Bowles, look it up, and I wanted to share this bit. Violent attacks are what happens when men do not have partners, Mr. Peterson says, and society needs to work to make sure those men are married. He was angry at God because women were rejecting him, Mr. Peterson says of the Toronto incel killer. The cure for that is enforced monogamy. That's actually why monogamy emerges. If the cure for that, if the cure for men who kill women is women, landing one or being assigned one, then how do you explain away the results of a Centers for Disease Control study that found that 55% of women who were murdered between 2003 and 2014 were killed by current or former romantic partners, compared to just 16% of female homicides that were committed by strangers? So, Peterson would have us believe that men kill because they don't have partners, at least straight men do, and the solution to that, the fix for that, is to assign these men partners and enforce monogamy, and then you would have to enforce it because you would be assigning these men, women, who didn't partner up with these men willingly, which is some serious handmaid's tale shit. But again, women are likelier to be killed by their male partners than by anyone else in their lives, so it would seem that having a partner isn't quote-unquote the cure that Peterson would have us believe it is. We've seen three incel attacks in North America since 2009. George Sodini, Elliot Roger, Alec Manassian. And between the three incels who attacked, they killed just 21 people. At least three women are killed by their male partners just in the United States every day. Three or more. Which means husbands and boyfriends, men with partners, end the lives of more women in a week than incels have ended in the last nine years. Half the men fail, Peterson told the New York Times, and no one cares about the men who fail. You know what? I care about the men who fail, and I spend a lot of time talking to men who are currently failing at relationships, at sex, at love, and I feel their pain. I empathize. 
But telling them that the fix, the solution for their pain is to return to the 1950s or to enslave women, neither of which is going to happen, that's not helpful. That's not how you show these men that you care about them. Because that is not going to happen. Again, it's not going to happen. Helping those men who have succumbed to toxic masculinity, to this idea that they are entitled to women's bodies, attentions, and that is, thank God, hashtag not all men, encouraging those men to have realistic expectations and helping those men who do want to mate to figure out what they're doing wrong, that's helpful. That's how you demonstrate to these men that you care about them and their plight. It does involve, however, telling people, men people, things they may not want to hear. And that quick fix bottle of nostalgia Xanax, it's always going to be a little more tempting than taking personal responsibility and doing the hard work of unlearning the harmful bullshit found between the covers of any book that claims to have worked out all the rules.